the AMI crew. This is Brandon Dawson, Cardone Ventures. He's got Heather, Buck, Natalie, Bryce, and somewhere around here is Josh on the phone with Marcelo. But um, he just wanted to talk to all of you because this is our new partner. Awesome. All right. Hey guys, I, I know you've been hearing about this partnership for a while. We're really excited to be here. This is kind of the first kickoff of operational integration where we're working with your teams, sending some big visions, some big goals together in order to go out and literally dominate the space with you guys. Uh, Grant Cardone is extremely excited about this partnership. It's one of the most exciting things that he keeps talking about because he believes in what you guys are doing, why you do it, and the opportunity to do it so much bigger and on a global basis. And so from our whole team at Cardone Ventures, we're really excited to be here with you guys. Your leadership team is outstanding, I would say remarkable. And what we're doing is planning on how we can go and maximize every single zip code so that you guys can do what you do absolutely the best um, and own it on behalf of partners who choose to work with us. And there's a lot of small details that get rolled into a huge package and it's going to be, uh, they'll be implemented and built and deployed over the next few years. So this isn't something that's going to happen as an instant on, but one relationship, one program, one uh, market domination at a time is the strategy and this is the start of all that. So we'll all remember this moment as we pick up momentum and, and start to uh, start to really um, impact the marketplaces with all the wonderful and amazing things you guys do. And you obviously, your leadership has been bragging about this remarkable team that's here. So from our team to your team, and more specifically from Grant Cardone, uh, we are so excited for Cardone Ventures to partner with you guys and get to work side by side with you. And this is going to be the kickoff of that. So we're really excited about the future and we appreciate each and every one of you. And my team's really excited to get in here and start working with you. So. Appreciate your guys' time, and we're excited, you know, like I said, we're excited to be here with you. Can you tell we're excited? We're excited. Yeah. This is six months, this has culminated in six months of conversation and strategy. Um, these guys on one side, Grant Cardone pushing on us on the other side to get it done, and, and we got it done, and so now it's time to move forward and, and dominate. We are incredibly excited, too. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. You guys have any questions for me? I know this is all like, I don't know what questions you might or might not have, but feel free to ask me anything that you want to ask me. There's nothing you're going to ask me that somebody else hasn't asked. <laughs> <laughs> any questions at all? Yeah, so when you say like uh, this is operational, where is that going to change us as far as operations go uh, immediately? That's a great question. So, you know, what we've done is gone out and blueprinted six or eight, actually, of the larger practices okay. uh, to do our original due diligence. And then we uh, have taken our databases and looked at the markets in the United States that can accommodate that kind of market saturation on a localized level. And we identified with only 250 locations, uh, we can create a billion dollar company, which means we need to do some things to support that bigger, better, more impactfully. Um, because once those primary markets are, are, are saturated, then we have a secondary, a third, a fifth, an eighth market. So we could extrapolate this thing out to 250 dominant markets with an average of about five to eight locations per market. So you're going out to like 1,500 to 2,000 clinics, and then we're a three and a half billion dollar company. What that means is that the level of services for marketing, operations, finance, human resources, professional development, strategy, all these things need to be developed and deployed. And it starts with the teams that we have in place today and it evolves forever after that. Um, it, it doesn't mean we do any radical changes because what you guys are doing is in those practices that are embracing what you're doing, because that's a big thing, right? They got to follow the, the plan. Um, uh, it works really well. So now it's a matter of how do we how do we create bigger resources? How do we automate resources? How do we join the right kind of third parties that can help us accelerate the ability to impact in all those segments together? And to be completely frank with you, we don't know where we're start. We're, we're like like we know what we're going after, but as far as what the teams here do, and then what we're going to need to build with you. Um, that's all the planning that's going to go on over the next six months to, you know, ever. 
as we get bigger. <laughs> I mean, at Oddigy, we started with one employee, and when we sold the business, there was 200. Yeah. Um, and we had tons of outsourced partners. And just to be clear, the reason we sold Oddigy is we had eight primary vendors that supported the marketplace, and they were all starting to buy each other and go direct. So it'd be like your suppliers going direct into the treatment side of it. And so we had to pick and choose, like, do we anchor in with a supplier? Because without a supplier, we don't have a business. And so we got to a place where when they went from 22 down to eight, and then eight down to six, and then six to five, we decided to sell to one of them so that we were guaranteed that our partners would be supplied product forever. Well, the funny thing is because we were acquired by one of the five, all four decided they wanted to supply us because they were scared that we would cut them off. So now our, our providers in audiology are the only ones that have access to all suppliers, whereas before they were limited to one or two or three. And to give you a little, uh, Quinn's in sales, so to give you an idea of like, how we're trying to expand and how we're, he just laid out the plan that Audigy had to get all of the audiology schools to send their interns to them and they would actually go in and teach them how to run businesses mm -hmm. and we're going to do some of that with AMI where we go to all the chiropractic schools and maybe even medical schools and osteopathic schools where we're teaching them this model. Yeah, so think about what we do and what you guys do in Chattanooga. It's kind of the example that people rotate through. Yeah. It, it'd be our intention to have 250 of those examples around the North America. And you've got specific locations for those? Um, we plotted the market conditions. We haven't gone as deep yet. We're platforming right now 22 businesses, nice. I think. Yeah. Once we platform those 22 businesses, we'll have competitive density, uh, average client acquisition. Like most of these practices draw their clients from some radius. And really what you want to do is get to the 80th percentile radius. So if you're in a particular market, what is 80% of your patient population? What what how far out are they coming from? And then inside that circle, what are all the internal referral sources? What are the different uh, uh, ways you can attract a client or a patient into your center from that radius? And then what happens is a guy like Buck will put a saturation plan together. It'll be everything from grassroots marketing, lunch and learns, digital strategies, print strategies, billboards, TV, you, you put it all together. Mm -hmm. And we start testing it into saturating markets and seeing what kind of percolation we get from a market penetration standpoint. That creates a competitive patient density number that we can study. And then when we understand that, we take it to everywhere and we saturate the markets we're in. And then we create outer rings of growth. We call it the grow forward strategy so that you can go from one location to maybe eight or 12 and dominate uh, on a best practice basis, which allows you to percolate up your team, create trainers, create expansion uh, employees, and then they can go out on a localized level and run their locations. And then you go to rapid uh, scale. So it, 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 it's kind of like what's happening in dental right now with, with group practices where you know you had a dentist and then the dentist got to be like four or five million and then open another location and open another location and they get up to eight or 12. Well, the whole point and break points and scaling is when you're running between eight and 15 million, the intricacies you need to go to 100 are much different. You need leadership, you need experience, you need systems, you need technologies, you need all these elements. But when they're in place, getting to 100 now is a whole new challenge, right? But the businesses that are at 500 million already have that. So they love to come in and grab the people at 10 or 12 because they don't need all that. They've already got it. Well, in our particular space, there is nobody at 10 or 12 or 15. There's maybe a few, but there's no, for our target market, there isn't anybody of that size consequence. We want to create that initial group. And then our AMI will be the big management company on top of that. So imagine this in California. Randall Rulin doing so well that he's now opening up satellite clinics all over California and the schools are sending them interns to put in those clinics to run them. Mm -hmm. How hard would it be to get other doctors in California to say, I want to be part of AMI? So sales sure. is going to I mean, go even through those students the roof. That come out of nowhere. That's right. That's, right. That's, That's right. A, that showing a path of success. So people, you know, the biggest issue is you come out of school and you have debt and then you hear about all the, how hard it is to make money, you know, in chiropractic and other things. Healthcare is changing, so there's a lot of fear. Fear creates anxiety and stress. And so people start thinking, oh my gosh, I got all this debt. I need to make a certain amount of income. I want to live in a certain market. What's in store for me? And then we roll in as a team and we say, hey, listen, 
there is an opportunity in this zip code to be this big, to earn this kind of money, to have equity earn instruction uh, opportunities, to be able to own practices without putting any capital out. We have programs to pay off your debt for school. We have programs to allow you to become a partner through performance. And we have systems to make it your success really simple, personally, professionally, and financially. Just come check it out. And all of a sudden, we're attracting the higher thinkers of maybe one day I want to own my practice. Maybe one day I want to be known as an expert in the marketplace. And we give them a clear path to ascend in, in doing what they love doing and what they're passionate about. And almost for everyone, they're devoid of that picture. It's like, how'd you do it? Well, I came out of school and I grinded it out. And I you know, got my knuckles bloody on the streets. And <laughs> then this happened to work and that happened to work. And I'm not really sure why and how, but I want to do it again. That's kind of how these guys all talk and, and ladies all talk to each other. Yeah. Whereas we're coming in with a very precise strategy. And then because we're doing this platform, we can go back and say, here are real life examples of people that did it exactly like this. We blueprinted it for you and we've got all the structures in place legally to help you ascend to whatever you want to do, uh, either as a partner, a key employee, a key professional, and then make other people's success easy. So that's what real leadership is, making other people's success easy. So it's our job first to do it with you guys. It's then all of our jobs to do it with the clinician practice owners. Sure. And then it's their job to do it with their staff and their teams. And then it's their team's uh, jobs to do it with their patients. And if everybody views that that's their responsibility, then that will be the differentiator between us and our competitors because they're still taking a very small perspective of what they're trying to do. And that's how we get the whole value chain along. So what he just said would be the future close, and if you end it by saying, so do you want to do it, or are we going to that guy? Right. That's going to be close. Sure. There's two ways to do this. There's the hard way, which might make you feel good if it works, or there's the easy way, which will assure success if you follow the path. Which do you believe is going to be the path that you want to take? Right. Right? And then, well, I don't know. Great. How would you know? Given those two choices... How would you make an educated decision as to which path you'd like to take? Well, John said, no, no, no. Do you believe in rumors and all this, or do you believe in your own eyes, your own ears, and your own experiences? What would be the absolute best way to make a decision that could impact your life forever? Educated decision or a decision other people have made based on their own beliefs? And then people say, I'd rather have an educated decision. Great. Every single month for two days, we run this program where you can come in and see exactly how we do it. And then ask yourself, have you seen that anywhere else in the marketplace? If the answer is no, then you need to have one simple question. Do I want to do it the easy way or the hard way? And you'll have, you can make that determination. Don't sure. trust anybody else. And then people will come and, and see what we're about. Okay. Cool. Hey, Brandon, can you give uh, everybody an idea of the kind of culture you like to create inside the companies you work with, like with the PPFs and the importance of your team member success? Yeah, so, you know, yeah. yeah, so so as I just iterated with, with, we starts here, goes out to the clinician practice owners. There are three points of integration in every single business, cultural, operational, financial. The flawed strategy with consolidation and, and mergers is they always eliminate the cultural aspect and go after financial and operational control. The beautiful part we have here, because we're working with independent businesses, with business owners who can choose what, how they want their practices to be, but we have to be the highest example of that. So we can't be teaching them how to do it the most successful, impactful way if we're not doing it first. So we like to understand that what allows any business to succeed, first and foremost, is the cultural aspect. How aligned are the people with the mission? And how, how aligned are they personally, professionally, and financially? So at Audigy, um, my core leadership team 15 years later are 60% uh, of them, it's the first jobs they ever had. And now they're presidents and executive vice presidents and they still run the business. Um, because we were always ahead of them about what they wanted to accomplish personally, professionally, financially. I cannot hold somebody accountable, like you guys, to the highest level of execution if you don't equally feel like you can hold us accountable for helping you pursue your personal, professional, financial goals. It just can't happen. Mm -hmm. I can tell you to do a job, and you can do a job because you have to. But that is a different level of engagement than you being inspired and empowered to go and crush it 
because you know what we're fighting for every day is helping you achieve your personal, professional, and financial goals. So all great businesses need to be built on the back of everyone pursuing the thing that's most passionate and empowering to them, not for the pursuit of just the thing that they're doing. And that's a fundamental that I have with business. That's, that's, that is my core belief because a Gallup poll has produced or come out every year. They talk about two thirds of the American population are disengaged or actively disengaged at work and one third are engaged. So the challenge of any business is to get the most engagement out of its people possible because all businesses are made or broke on the increments. Things can work or not work on the increments. And if we're not all fight, fighting to make them work on the increments, then we're not getting all the contribution to the business. And the only way you can get that is to have people actually feel like their passion of whatever they're doing is being pursued on the increments. So our first job is to understand, like, what's your big picture? What's your big goals? We spend time with business owners doing that, right? Yeah. yeah. When's the last time somebody sat down with you guys and said, what's your three, five, ten year goal? 99% of all those questions out of thousands of people we've asked have said, I don't know, no one's ever asked me. Well, then how can I actually ask you to put 110% of everything you have into something if you don't know for yourself what you're fighting for? We certainly can't fight on your behalf to help you ascend in your goals if we're not asking you. Sure. So, so it's our fundamental belief, my fundamental belief, that you have to have a clear picture of what you're building inside of this organization for yourself personally, professionally, financially, so that you will put that extra 10, 20, 30, 50% of, of empowerment into the situation because all the people that are reliant on us are, are going to need our help at certain points of time. The economy is going to change, the competition will change, the government will change things. These are all known, so there's no reason for us to spend any time worrying about them. We need to spend our time right now planning for the best, hoping for the best, and can positioning ourselves to take advantage when it goes the other direction for our partners. Mm -hmm. Our best growth years in audiology were for Audigy were 08, 09, 10, and 11 because everyone was so scared they stopped spending, they stopped hiring, they they allowed their fears to dictate how they engaged their patients and at that same period of time we just accelerated through the whole marketplace with our partners because we were attracting the best personnel, we were attracting the best kind of patients, we were attracting because we weren't afraid. We were saying the right things that resonated with people who wanted that, right? And for some people, they came in and said, this is a breath of fresh air. All this drama going on, and you guys are talking about how you can help me. Versus our competition was talking, oh, isn't this horrible? They're talking to patients about how horrible the marketplace is. Patient wants to get fixed. They don't, you know, like, they're, they, I, but this hurts worse, or I can't hear, yeah. or my teeth don't look good. I just want to feel good about something, so stop talking to me about all the stuff I came in here worrying about, right? <laughs> so it really is going against the trends or setting the trends. And what we love to do is set the trends and then work against everybody else's trends. And we will get a lot of flack from a lot of people, and we will be the focal point of hate and, and animosity because the people we work with that we care about that we're committed to, they will out-dominate anybody else in their marketplace and we'll have a lot of headwind in the process of doing that because there are people that don't want to see us succeed mm -hmm. yeah. across lots of spectrums. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So we're really excited to be here with you guys. Cool. Yeah. 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 a variety of events we're going to be here please introduce yourselves we want to get to know each and every one of you uh, our whole team on Nicardo Ventures like we are not strangers when we come here we are absolutely excited about connecting with each of you even though we can't see all of you right now <laughs> <laughs> like <laughs> yes Heather can yeah. <laughs> fill us in on what's happening well, Heather's our well, well, just, just so you guys know Heather and Natalie are staying for the afternoon right the rest of the team yeah. is leaving uh, and they're going to be going to every area in AMI. Just Josh to is going to stay too. Oh, Josh yeah, is saying to, to begin to learn what we all do. This is the start of it. Yeah. Um, one thing I want to make clear because I get this with every single business integration I've ever worked in. Uh, businesses are great big ships that are operating in really tiny canals. So I want you to visualize this. You don't just grab the yoke and try to dock it. You, you know, you, you strategic about how you maneuver through the canals, right? And and therefore, there's not going to be rapid, fast change. That that's crazy. It'll be slow, systematic guidance of change over time. After we get to know each other, after we understand what's working, after we question what's not working, as a team as we're talking about it, until we find things that we can strike fast on. But by the time we get there, everybody's like, yeah, we know why we're doing it. 
So I, I always like to say, there's no reason for anybody to walk out of here like, oh, what's this radical change? There'll be no radical change. There'll be incremental improvements over time. That's innovation, right? We're not reinventing. We're just innovating. So I think the beautiful thing is, by the time we get to where we're really deploying things, we're going to be a fact finding for probably the next three months or two and a half months. Then we start working with the teams here to start thinking about how to redeploy. And by that time, everybody will have their PPFs done. We'll have your personal professional financial goals. We'll understand what you do here. We'll understand what you think about ways we can improve the organization. We'll be answering questions with you about things we can change. But it's not like we're rolling, we're rolling in with, hey, we're going to radically change everything and everybody's going to start doing something different. I always like to make sure everybody understands slow, systematic, incremental, granular changes over time. Make sense? Yeah. 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 Awesome. One of the things that really resonated with Colleen and I when we first met him, uh, he said, all right, this is Mason. Mason's going to tour you around Audigy. And what's Mason's title right now? He's the president. He's the president. And as we're talking to him, when did you start working here? While I was in college. That's how it goes. I mean, the, he, he keeps his people because his people love him. That's what we want to do. Well, and I keep them because I love them as well, but there's a higher expectation of people that you implicitly trust than there is of people who are just there temporarily. So it's an exchange, right? And, and, and my job is to exchange the ability to help people pursue the things that are most important to them. Their job is to exchange with us their full attention and detail and loyalty to the mission at hand because otherwise we're all distracted. But I can't ask for one if you don't ask for the other. And the team here fundamentally 100% believes in that philosophy as well. So I think that, uh, I don't think I know or we wouldn't have got to this point. This is gonna be really an exciting time for us. We're just pleased that, you, that we're here to meet with you guys. Cool, yeah. great. Awesome, thanks guys. Right.